Good afternoon to you guys. It's a boy faithful bringing you to once again from Afra, Ghana. You remember last time during the Mother's Day, I said it in my video that religious group was infected. All religious group was infected. Someone asked me a question is that what I'm saying, if I'm saying that religious group was infected, means that Christianity is not from God but is from men. Or neither Islamic is not Islam is not from God but is from men. Judaism is not from God, it's from men. So I decided to explain the article that I read years ago to read the article to all of you to understand the reason why I said Christianity was invented by man. Guys, if today is your first time of visiting to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification for my all my videos. I'll be much delighted if you subscribe to my channel, click on the notification and become part of my channel, Faithful on Live TV. In this channel, I always give an information related or regarding on travel issues, most especially the problems that our people face outside and the problems that migrants face in Europe and the difficulties that citizens in Africa undergo through. Let me go straight to the topic of the articles that I read. Religion was invented. Indeed, it was invented. And I know it very well that someone will ask me, if so, it means Christianity, Islam, Hindu, and other forms of other religion was all invented. And the answer is absolutely true. All these regions, religious group was invented by man. So guys, after listening or watching this video, I hope you understand the reason why I said all religious group was invented by man. Guys, Christianity and Islam was invented from Jews region. When you divide this into two, you get the religions or the principles or the worship or the doctrine of the Judaism religions. The Old Testament talks a lot about the Islam region. The Old Testament talks a lot about the Christian region, which is combined to the New Testament. There was a day when I met a certain Jewish rabbi and he told me that God wants everyone to be who he is. You don't need a religion to be safe. What you need is to be who you are and be sound-minded. Respect every creation which is being created by God. Because once there is a creator, there is a creation. God born us for all of us to be free thinkers. But we have been programmed by a group of people. The same thing as we have been programmed by the coronavirus. For example, if I was born into a Muslim family, like I'm a Muslim, the same thing I was born into, uh, what do you call it, a Christian family, and I'm a Christian. When we put Christianity and Islam down, both of us, we believe in God. Then, what about all of us believing in God has caused a great problem or grudge between us? Muslims are fasting, playing, looking for followers. Christians are fasting, praying, looking for followers. Meanwhile, everyone believes that they are worshipping the same God. Have you ever thought of it or think about this? Everyone dreams and thinks that he's going to the same heaven. If you are going to the same heaven, why do you compete your religion and impose it into your friend or brothers? This shows how Christianity was infected. Christianity or religious groups sound like a political parties. I will give you a certain evidence. One evidence proved that religion was invented and imposed on people, most especially to Africans, 
is through the languages that they have imposed upon us. The first thing that we're going to talk about, like how the white program Africa and also part of part of the people in the world is by imposing their language onto you. When I was in Arab, when I was in Middle East, all of them speak Arabic. They don't care of speaking English. English is nothing over there. Why? The reason is the Saudi Arabians believe themselves that they have Islam region and they are the founder of Islamic region. Therefore, they respect their language, the Arabic. If you meet someone, you have to say, Salaam Alaikum. If you did not say that, the person knows that you have disrespected him. Why are we into a grudge? Why are we handling religious group in politicizing each other? Now, if someone is a Muslim, Christian man is very jealous. If someone is a Christian, Muslim is also jealous. This shows that the religious group was invented by man. Because God cannot put us into competition with when it's come to worship. Do you get what I'm saying? Think of what I'm saying very well. If you can think about it very well, you get the concept of what I'm trying to explain to you. There is a creator. There is a creator. The creator of all universe. We cannot see him. Who has ever seen God? No one has ever seen God. God is not a man. God is an active force behind the nature. Do you get it? As well as we all find ourselves in this earth and we have seen a tree, we have seen a sea, we have seen a land, it means that God exists. Of course, God exists. We came and met a tree. We never came and met the Bible. We came and met a sea. We never came and met a Quran. We came and met all type of natural resources created by God. And the person who makes this exist is God. The person who makes all these things to exist is the creator. Of course, as well as there is the is creations, there is a creator. But when it comes to religious group, it was being invented by man. The same thing as coronavirus was invented by the Chinese. Do you get what I'm saying? So the person who asked me a question is that your guy faithful, why are you saying that all religious group was invented? Is the reason why I am explaining on the topic into its details and biblical way so you can get the idea or the concept of the reason why I said all religious group was invented. Do you get it? There are over eight billion people in this world who can testify and tells me that he has ever seen God before. There are over eight billion people in this earth who can comment, send message and tells me that he has ever seen God. No one has ever seen God. Is God a white man or God is a black man? Who can answer that question? No one has ever seen God with his ray eye, with his naked eye. But in the book of Genesis, it is written in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Who was telling the people that in the beginning, what you go and read it and he said that it was Moses. Moses was the one who was, and okay, who is Moses? Moses is human being, just like you. If Moses is alive, we can say Moses is like President Akufuado or Moses was like Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump write it down today that in the beginning God created heaven and earth, are we supposed to use it to impose on our children, saying that since Donald Trump says that in the beginning God created heaven and earth, so our children and all our generation to believe and say and accept it that God created heaven and earth? According to the principle of generation, we don't know the type of nature or the type of creator that existed before. Either it was heaven, either it was earth, we don't know. So these are some of the things we're not supposed to think about and make it bothering us too much saying that in the beginning God created heaven. I think these things is in need, but to the extent of essence, eh, into a biblical way to human life, we are meant to love each another. 
we are meant to handle and treat all ourselves as women, respect each other, emancipate ourselves from racism, emancipate ourselves from bad treatment, more treatment, and other sorts of things that we do to our fellow brothers and sisters. We have to be free and free-minded thinkers. Shouldn't have it in our mind that this one is a white man, this one is an African. Look at what was happening in China. More treating the blacks because they are blacks. This tell you that all religious group was invented. In America, USA, they know it very well that religious groups was invented. So now they need word, word order. All of them. Now they need word, word order. For the whole worldwide to use one currency, one money, the whole worldwide to use one president. The word order, do you get it? Because they knew very well that religious group was invented. Lord Macri, who came to gather once a British parliament, he wrote it to the parliament, uh, the British minister, as I posted it last time on my channel, that in order to control women, you need to impose rituals on the person. That is what is happening as a result. Majority of the Africans we've been ruled by the Christians, and now we are Christians. Happened that it was the Islam Empire who established or dread in Africa, like majority of us are Muslims. Do you get it? I don't think the son of a sheikh will be a Christian. The son of a sheikh in Saudi Arabia will be a Christian. The son of a sheikh must be a Muslim. And I don't think that the daughter of a pope will be a Muslim. The daughter of a pope must be a Christian. Why are we into competition? We are into competition because if the Islam regions control the whole worldwide, the Islam empire become the dominated one. But if the Christians religious group control the whole worldwide, the Christian empire dominated to uh, rule the whole humankind. And it's simple, it's pillage. So if the Buddhism or the Judaism or the Hare Krishna control the whole worldwide, it means that the Indians are ruling the whole human. This is why they are in their vice versa to tell women that evangelize for my religious group. So if you are there killing people because of your religious group, if you are there or treating someone because of your religious group, you are doing this for your own selfish interests. Because all religious groups were invented by man, but not God. I hope you get what I'm saying very well. Guys, if today is your first time of connecting with my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell for all my videos. It's a boy faithful bring it to you. It's just like some people say that they are the only people that God speak to them. They came with different messages. Some prophets, even in Ghana, in Africa, some prophets who came out that this political party is going to win. By the end of the day, the political party will not win. Is it a prophecy? Is this a prophecy? Now we are facing a big problem. We are in the challenges of coronavirus. All religious group is asleep. All religious group is silent. Coronavirus has silent all religious group. So how can the Islam region tells me that their God can heal? How can Christian religions can tell me that their God can heal? If you are a healer, heal coronavirus. So guys, don't use your 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 selfish interest of being an Islam. To maltreat someone, being Hare Krishna, to look down on someone, be a Christian, to look down on to someone. Do you get it? In this world, in this world, we can only create a future by working very hard, having the right, right decision, work very hard. You know it very well. Tomorrow is even illusion. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. If you work hard today, then it will tell you what you'll be tomorrow. If you work very hard today, 20 years ago, 20 years ago in your life, 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago, 
either you will be rich or you will be poor. It doesn't deter by religious group. It doesn't deter either you are Muslim or you are Christian. Either you will be rich or you will be poor. Determines on your effort. That is why you can't predict a future. You can never. No one can even predict a future. The future is today. Future is not tomorrow. I watch a certain video whereby the United Arab Emirates president, King Mohammed Ben Zayed, he was saying in the United States, in America, that he wants Emirates to develop now. He wants Dubai to develop now, but not tomorrow. When I watched the video, I was shocked. This is man of integrity. This type of leaders is what we need in Africa. You have to start to think of developing Africa today, now, but not tomorrow. So the agenda of 2060, the agenda of 2050, the agenda of 2040, it can only be fulfilled when we work hard today. And start thinking of religious group. This one is a Christian, this one is a Muslim, and this one is that. Of course, we need a moral lesson. Reading of the Bible is very good. You can read the Bible, you can read the Quran, but you have to take it as a moral lesson. Don't take it as something to impose on your brother or sisters. God will build your nation. God will build your life. That is what the doctrine of Christianity say. God will build your life. God will make it for you. God will heal you. God will do this. You will only build your nation by working hard. You only build your nation by putting good rules. Working hard. Implementing your constitution. Africans, it's time to set out to implement the constitutions and start of to stop depending on and this and that and that and using doctrine to rule yourself. Why all this? Words are powerful. Words are very powerful. The words we speak today determine our future. So if two or more people gathered and pray planning and thinking of their prosperity. Words are powerful. But work, words of coming together to pray, it works only 3% in our lives. As a human, your work is to put more effort. The government in Africa doesn't support its citizens. The government in Africa doesn't give money, source of finance to its citizens to establish. You just go outside there and you see some young people working hard under the sun. There is so many land over here that the government can build up industries and give this mechanic, transfer all the mechanics to that places. They are finding things difficult and yet you expect in Africa to develop. How will the youngest not travel to Europe? They will do that. So if you are here talking about religious groups, don't put me wrong that why do I say that religious group was invented by man and blah blah blah. Is Moses not a man? Prophet Muhammad, he wasn't a man? Who is not a man? Even Jesus Christ, according to the doctrine of Christian, he was born as a human. Is Jesus also not a human being? So your effort will determine your future. Africa need more effort. The whole worldwide. If you want to develop or you want to progress, you need more effort. You work hard. Then your future will be flourished. That is how the world is. Even a wicked, the most wicked man on earth, if he works very hard, he will gain and make it. Last time I was telling one of my friends that I will go and uh, we have to go to Ajemai and establish in Ajemai and do farming job in Ajemai. I was telling one of my friends. Let's go to Ajumai and do a certain farming work. My friend told me that she was having a certain land. I said, yes, invest the land into farming and you make money. Making money today doesn't depend on Allah. Making money doesn't depend on Allah. Making money today doesn't depend on God. God has already brought us to this earth. It's you and I, our duty to work very hard to achieve our goal. To work very hard to get developed. Our words will create the future. Then we have to work toward it. So if our words create the future for us and we refuse to work toward it, we will still remain poor. 
We live in the world of choices. We live in the world of choices. So if someone chooses to be a Muslim or someone chooses to be a Christian, someone chooses to be a Hare Krishna, someone chooses to be Buddhism, someone chooses to be traditionalist, no matter what a person chooses to be, let a person be. Don't use your religious rules to impose on the person. Don't use your religious group to impose on something. There is nothing called future in this world. There is nothing called future. Your future determines today. Your future determines what you are doing today. If you work very hard and you know how to keep your money, you know how to manage your own affairs, you will be flourished tomorrow. That is how it is. No money, no life. Do you get it? Our decision, our action, our thoughts, our words is what creates the future for us. Tomorrow doesn't exist, though, my friend. Tomorrow is illusion. Tomorrow will never come in our life. Our tomorrow is what we are doing today. Our future is in our past. So what we are doing today will tell us what we're going to face tomorrow. Africa, we are seeking to be united. Africa, we are seeking for unity. Africa, we are seeking to have one uh, government. Africa, we are seeking as what Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the Ghana president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, yield his strength, yield his energy, wasted his resources, trying to seek the unity of Africa, for Africa to be one. It was not achieved. Now, uh, some of the president has begun to write the same issues that Africa have to unite, Africa have to be this, Africa. But you are not putting it into action. If you want Africa to unite, you want Africa to be developed, you have Africa to be one, you have to make it now. The decision has to take now, 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 but not tomorrow. Enough of the talking. If you want to do something, start taking the decision and the action now, but not tomorrow. Take the decisions and implement the actions today. And stop thinking of... We will make Africa unite. Africa have to be one. Africa have to be one. Africa have to have to be have to be. They have to be. They have to be. They have to be is enough. Why all this? We need God to accomplish tomorrow. Five years of today, five years ahead in our life. Either we'll be poor or we'll be rich. Depends on our action. Depends on our, our on our decision. Depends on what we are doing today. Do you get it? I hope you are getting the doctrine or the concept. You are getting the concept. Guys, you are welcome. If today is your first time of connecting with me, don't forget to subscribe. And click on the notification for all my videos. It's a boy if it will bring you to you. Guys, subscribe, 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 and click on the notification bell for more videos. I'm here to give you more tips, more hints. Do you get it? Don't forget, it's a boy if it will bring you to you from Ghana, Accra. Indeed, you're going to love the messages I'm going to bring it to you. I am still on the topic. The problem and the difficulties that I undergo to drive when I paid a visit to Ethiopia. But this message or this video just is passing away. I just came to answer uh, a message that someone sent me. Guys, take note of this. If you read the Bible that all of us believe, if the Bible was not invented by man in order to exalt money from people, or if the Bible was not invented by man as their job, we have pastors and the pastors are being paid. That is their job. Someone who asked me years ago, you were an evangelist. Of course, I was. But all my days that I was an evangelist, I never exalted money from anyone. I never take money from anyone. I'm the kind of man who used to be inside a bus and preach as an evangelist. Yes, I am. But I've never exalted money from anyone. No one can tell me that I collected even single gram from him. 
No. Or single God, I see this pencil from him. No. I never do that. I never do that. But Rachel's group was invented to exalt money from even the poor. From the poor ones. Who tells me that the pastors are not being paid? If you are doing the word of God and you think that you are devoted, you are doing the word of God, why are you expecting a salary? Can you think about this? Can you really think of what I'm saying? The Bible says that gold and silver belongs to him. Gold and silver belongs to God. Gold and silver belongs to Allah. Then why do the poor give money to the pastors? Why do the poor ones, the church members, give money to the pastors? Guys, I'll end the video here. But if today is your first time of connecting with my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. It's a boy faithful bring it to you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.